A car accident turned me into the ex-husband of a big shot in a CEO novel. Remembering the tragic fate of the original husband, I quickly signed my name on the divorce papers. The female CEO's face immediately darkened. Colin, are you sure about this? My heart skipped a beat, and I hurriedly clutched my wallet. You must be kidding, there's no way I'm giving back a single penny of that sky-high breakup fee. Chapter 1 After lying in a hospital bed for three days, I finally accepted the reality of my transmigration. I, Colin, an ordinary college student, had transmigrated into the role of the villainous ex-husband in a cliché CEO novel. I was the ex-husband of the CEO, riding high on my family's wealth and power, doing whatever I pleased. At the university's opening ceremony, I fell in love with the heroine, Alicia. At first sight, from then on, I pursued her relentlessly, using every trick in the book to force her into marrying me. Alicia, the quintessential heroine of a campus novel, was beautiful, talented, and came from a poor family. Her father was deaf and mute, and her mother had kidney failure. In the end, to raise money for her mother's medical bills, she chose to compromise and married me. In five years of marriage, Alicia went from being an unknown office worker to a rising star in the business world. And as for our relationship, it just got worse and worse. Alicia gradually broke free from my control, but I was completely oblivious, acting more and more recklessly, until I pushed her unforgettable first love down the stairs, breaking his leg. That was the last straw. Alicia couldn't take it anymore and filed for divorce. It was around that time I got into the car accident. Alicia didn't come to see me until the third day and immediately tossed the divorce papers at me. Colin, haven't you had enough? Her voice was ice cold, her eyes full of impatience and disgust. But even so, when I saw her face, my heart still skipped a beat. No wonder the original Colin was so obsessed, this face was genuinely stunning. Then, I glanced at the divorce papers and saw how much I stood to gain. My heart almost stopped. Holy crap. I'm rich. The original Colin's family was wealthy, but he was a spoiled brat, and he had a younger brother who was better at everything. Inheriting the family business was never in the cards for him. Meanwhile, Alicia had skyrocketed in just a few short years, and her assets were now substantial. Once we divorced, the breakup fee would be astronomical. All my life, I'd done good deeds, so becoming filthy rich like this was just what I deserved. After calculating how much I'd get, I suppressed my excitement, keeping my head down in silence for a long time, afraid that if I smiled, Alicia would notice something was off. Then, I took a deep breath. All right, I agree to the divorce. Alicia was stunned. She probably didn't expect me to agree so readily, but opportunities like this don't come twice. Before she could react, I swiftly signed my name on the divorce papers. Alicia seemed to sense something was wrong and furrowed her brows. You. I turned my head and with a lifeless tone, said, I've thought it through, Alicia, let's let each other go, there was a long silence behind me, I was about to curl back under the covers and count my money again when I noticed Alicia still hadn't moved, quietly staring at the divorce papers, puzzled, I asked, aren't you leaving, Alicia looked up, I gently hinted, by the way, hasn't that guy, Lee, not fully recovered yet, shouldn't you go visit him more, Alicia's face suddenly turned cold, chapter 2, I felt a bit uneasy, could it be that she regretted giving me so much money? But I'd already signed my name, and there was no way she could back out now. Besides, considering how magnanimous I'm being right now, it's only fair that she gives me the money. Alicia had an unforgettable first love back in college. Justin, unlike the arrogant and domineering rich kid I was, Justin had a gentle, mature, and hardworking personality. He came from a single-parent family with a difficult financial situation, but he was a high achiever in every way. In some sense, he and Alicia were two of a kind, he was the only one who truly understood her, her real soulmate, if it weren't for me, the two of them would have naturally ended up together, building a happy life in the city after graduating, but I ruined it all, the original Colin was insanely jealous of Justin and gave him a hard time whenever he could, constantly picking fights, and eventually even resorting to physical violence in a fit of madness, from then on, Alicia completely despised Colin and severed ties with him. It doesn't take a genius to figure out how terrible the fate of a villain like me would be after crossing both the male and female leads. So, the smart move right now, grab the money and run. Alicia eventually stormed out, slamming the door. I patted my chest and muttered, still has quite the temper, but then I thought about the money I'd be getting, and my mood lifted again. This kind of windfall isn't something that happens to everyone. Just as I was basking in my good fortune, my phone buzzed with a message from Joanna. Heard Alicia finally bothered to visit you today. The tone was unmistakably mocking. Joanna was Colin's childhood friend, a spoiled rich girl who lived for partying and having fun. She couldn't stand Alicia, and Alicia didn't think much of her either. The two were always at odds, 
especially after I married Alicia and the two families interacted more. Joanna's father often praised Alicia in front of her, which only made Joanna hate her more. She called me a lovesick fool, always telling me to forget Alicia and come pick vegetables at her family's farm. This time, it was clear she was just here to laugh at my misery, but did I care? Of course not, I was too busy getting rich to waste time worrying about anything else. Yep, I replied, snapping a photo of the divorce papers and sending it to her. Starting today, your boy's single. Dinner's on you, Joanna. She immediately called, her first words being, are you out of your mind? Ugh, such a rude way to talk. I'll head to the Civil Affairs Bureau once I'm discharged. Thankfully, the car accident wasn't too serious. I only had a mild concussion. You got any celebration planned? Joanna was quiet for a moment, then laughed. All right then, what's the plan? Coup de chao. What kind of celebration are you looking for? Well, I heard you recently opened a new bar. A week later, I walked out of the hospital in an expensive suit, looking sharp and ready to go. Joanna folded her arms and snickered. Dressed up like this just to leave the hospital. You've lost it. Haven't you? I clicked my tongue. What do you know? Today's a big day. Joanna couldn't be bothered to argue and turned to walk out, only to bump into Alicia. Alicia's eyes lingered on her for a moment, her gaze icy. You're here. I walked up to Alicia with a grin. Where's the car? Alicia's expression softened slightly. In the parking lot. Let's go. Joanna, annoyed, shot me a glance and squinted. Colin, you're not riding with me. I waved her off. I've got to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau with Alicia to finalize the divorce so it's easier to take her car. As I spoke, I urged Alicia, who had frozen in place, what are you standing there for? Let's go. Chapter 3, Joanna burst out laughing. Of course, can't delay something this important. Alicia's lips curled into a sneer. Colin, you're in such a hurry to cut ties with me. Weren't you the one who wanted this divorce? Why the sarcastic tone all of a sudden? I answered honestly, I've got other plans tonight. I'm just trying to get this settled quickly so I don't waste your time. Alicia was always busy, she hardly ever came home. I knew it was because she didn't want to see me, and honestly, I had no interest in staying tangled up with her either. Going our separate ways and living our own lives sounded like a perfect plan. Alicia's face was cold as she turned around. The Civil Affairs Bureau wasn't crowded, so Alicia and I were called up pretty quickly, just as we were about to go in. Alicia's phone rang. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw it was Justin. Alicia stepped aside to take the call, and I could faintly hear her soft gentle voice, yeah, I'm still out, handling something, she never spoke to Colin like that, this marriage had been forced from the very beginning, five years of constant conflict, and they could barely manage to sit down for a meal together, let alone speak to each other with such tenderness, the staff member called out again, are you two coming in or not, I shook my head, feeling a bit sorry for the original Colin, in Alicia's heart, he never had any place at all, Alicia, I called out to her, can we take care of my business first, Alicia always prioritized Justin, and no matter how much Colin had argued or fought, it never made any difference to her. The original Colin was foolish, thinking he could ever win against Justin. It was just asking for heartbreak. Alicia too, if she took care of this now, she'd finally be free to be with her unforgettable first love. Alicia seemed momentarily stunned, then said into the phone, let Dr. Zhang check on you first, I'll be there soon. Twenty minutes later, I held the freshly printed divorce certificate in my hand. Tears of joy welling up. It's mine. The massive breakup fee is mine. From today on, I'm going to travel, drink, and enjoy life to the fullest. I turned to Alicia, brimming with sincerity. Alicia, thank you, and goodbye. Thank you for the money, and goodbye forever. As I walked out, I immediately spotted Joanna. She was leaning against an obnoxiously bright red Ferrari, impossible to miss. I strode over happily. Your boy's rich. Time to spend some money. Behind me, Alicia's voice suddenly called out. Sounding hesitant, Colin, I turned around quickly, anything else? Alicia's lips pressed into a tight line, her emotions hard to read, if this were the original Colin, he'd be digging into her feelings, trying to figure out what was wrong, but I couldn't be bothered to keep up the act anymore, no, then I'm leaving. I quickened my pace, as a disposable villain like me, staying far away from the main leads was the key to happiness. As we drove off in Joanna's car, I glanced in the rearview mirror, Alicia stood there, surrounded by people coming and going, looking oddly lonely. Well, now that I'm out of her life, she can finally be free, right? Joanna gave me a sideways glance. You feeling regret? What? I grinned eagerly. You saved a few of those lovely ladies at your bar for me, right? Chapter 4. Joanna was utterly speechless. I've been worried about you for nothing. I actually thought you were deeply in love with her, but you're practically glowing with happiness now that you're divorced. Wait, is it that obvious? 
I flipped down the sun visor mirror and took a good look at myself. Colin was now 28 years old. So I'd aged 10 years in a flash. But luckily this face was still handsome. Most importantly, I've got money. I thought about it and offered an explanation. She doesn't love me. So I'm done loving her too. During a red light, Joanna turned to look at me. Staring for so long that it made my skin crawl. Finally, she spoke. Her tone hard to decipher. That car accident really changed you. Huh? My heart skipped a beat. And after a moment of silence, I shrugged. Maybe after a near-death experience, people just start seeing things differently. Joanna blinked in surprise, then smiled. Fair enough. All right. Tonight's bill is on me. Two hours later, Joanna regretted her words. Her face was dark. Haven't you had enough? She wasn't talking about the drinks but the girls in the club. I raised my glass to her. Come on, have a drink with me. Joanna. I patted her on the shoulder and pointed at the circle of pretty girls around us. Look at them, sweet beautiful, and every one of them better than my ex-wife, honestly, with so many gorgeous women out there, and with money and looks to spare, why on earth did the original Colin hang himself on one tree, people get stuck in their heads too easily, Joanna sneered, finally seeing the light, ah, huh? a slim girl came over to pour me a drink, smiling sweetly, try this, brother, sure, I was about to take it when Joanna snatched it away, no mixing drinks, you just got out of the hospital, and I'm not calling an ambulance for you later, she glanced at the girl, who immediately turned pale and bowed her head in apology. I'm sorry, brother. I didn't know. I waved it off generously. It's fine. I'm in a good mood today. Then I shot a teasing look at Joanna. Honestly, you're something else, double standards much. You're always letting your boyfriends feed you drinks. But when it's my turn, I'm out of luck. Joanna let out a sharp laugh. How is that the same? Why wouldn't it be? I'm a freshly minted rich guy. I can do whatever I want. Then Joanna suddenly asked. By the way, does your family know about all this? I froze. Crap, I'd forgotten about that. Before I could say anything, Joanna gave me a knowing look. I knew it. You're too scared to tell them. It's not that I don't want to, it's that I don't dare. The original Colin didn't have the best relationship with his family. His parents were stubborn and old-fashioned, clearly favoring his younger brother. While Colin was rebellious, back when he married Alicia, it caused a huge falling out between him and his family. Later, when Alicia started to succeed, their attitude did a 180. They repeatedly blamed Colin for causing conflicts with Alicia. So, the original villain's life hadn't exactly been great either. But, whatever. The divorce papers are in my hand. What do I have to be afraid of? The days that followed were even better than I had imagined. I asked the butler to pack up all of Alicia's belongings and send them off. This villa had originally been a wedding gift from Colin's parents. But Alicia had never liked staying here. Maybe every corner of the place reminded her of the humiliation Colin had put her through. At first, she mostly stayed at the office, and when her career took off, she bought an apartment near work. The original Colin had visited once, only to awkwardly run into Justin there. Awkward, to say the least. Even though Justin immediately explained that he was only there because it had started raining and he needed to take shelter, there was no way Colin's temper could handle that without getting angry. They had a huge fight, followed by a month-long cold war. In the end, Colin couldn't take it anymore and gave in, softening up, after all. Alicia was his whole world, poor guy, but now, I had this enormous, luxurious three-story villa all to myself. Alicia hadn't left much behind, but after cleaning up, the place still felt a little empty, so I headed out for some shopping therapy. I began commanding in my favorite store, this one, that one, and not this one, wrap up the rest. Yes, Mr. Koo. The store manager's face practically split with joy, she was thrilled, and so was I, with a few staff trailing behind to carry my purchases. I was just about to head out when I ran into Alicia. She froze when she saw me. I had already noticed Justin standing behind her. Chapter 5. Looks like his leg was healing nicely. He was even out shopping now. Alicia's lips moved slightly. And she actually spoke first. It's his mother's birthday soon. So I'm helping him pick out a gift. I blinked. Oh. Why are you telling me this? I don't care. Out of courtesy. I nodded politely. But before I could walk away. Justin spoke up. He looked somewhat apologetic. Mr. Koo. I'm sorry, my leg's still not great, so I had Ollie help me get here, it looks like you've bought a lot, need some help carrying it, Ollie could give you a hand, I'll be fine on my own, ah, what a masterful speaker, he subtly reminded everyone that I was the one who had pushed him, implied I shouldn't be jealous, and generously offered Alicia to help me, I smiled and said, no need, my car is just downstairs, besides, it wouldn't be right to trouble MS, sue with personal matters, Justin blinked, what, I turned to Alicia, surprised, MS. Sue, you didn't tell Mr. Lee we're already divorced. Silence. Justin stared at Alicia, shocked. 
Alicia's delicate face tightened, her expression unpleasant. I don't like broadcasting my private affairs. Was that a veiled jab at me? Just because I threw a few divorce parties? Why so petty? Justin, clearly not expecting such a bombshell, opened and closed his mouth a few times. Ali, you and Mr. Ku, why didn't you tell me? Hearing his voice seemed to remind Alicia that he was still there. Her red lips moved, and after a brief pause, she explained quietly, I've been busy lately. Ha. Huh. She used to say that line all the time to brush Colin off. Now the tables had turned, and Justin was on the receiving end, but the male lead is different from the villain. For Justin, this line was actually great news. His gaze flicked between Alicia and me, and he awkwardly offered, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I didn't mean to bring it up. Mr. Ku, I hope you don't mind. Of course, I didn't mind, she's just a woman I no longer have anything to do with. Well, you two carry on. My personal shopper is handling my stuff, and these bags are heavy. I'll be on my way. Just as I took a step, Alicia suddenly called out. Wait, I turned around. MS, Sue, is there something else? Alicia's brow furrowed slightly, as if she wasn't used to my new attitude toward her. My mom said you haven't visited in a while. Alicia's voice lowered, as though she was reluctant to bring it up but had no choice. If you have time. You should go see her. She was talking about her mother, the one suffering from kidney failure. Unlike Alicia, her mother had always liked Colin. Alicia had never told her mother that she was forced to marry Colin. In the old woman's eyes, Colin, the wealthy young master who didn't mind the Sioux family's poor background and was devoted to Alicia, was the ideal son-in-law. Back when they had first gotten married, Colin had worked hard to gain her mother's favor, visiting regularly and taking care of her in order to win points with Alicia. He knew this was his last bargaining chip, Alicia was filial, and even if she wanted to, she wouldn't easily break up with him because of her mother. But when Colin attacked Justin, he crossed a line, and Alicia cut him off, leaving him with no cards left to play. I thought about it and agreed. All right, I'll visit tomorrow. After all, the old lady hadn't done anything wrong. Alicia visibly relaxed and said, I'll come pick you up in the morning. I smiled and waved my car keys. No need. I've got my own car and two good legs. I'll drive myself. No need to trouble MS. Sue. Alicia and Justin's expressions both froze. Chapter 6. The next morning. I set off for the nursing home. It was a high-end facility in the suburbs. With excellent services and amenities. Of course. It was also incredibly expensive. Mr. Ku. You're here. The caregiver greeted me politely. She had been hired by Alicia. And knowing about the strained relationship between me and Alicia. She treated me with a certain coldness. Mrs. Sue was lying in bed. Years of dialysis had left her frail and thin, but she had improved a lot since staying at this nursing home. Sandra's eyes lingered on the food container in my hand for a moment before she curled her lips, a hint of disdain on her face. Even a caregiver looked down on me for my attempts to be considerate, because she knew that no matter what I did, it would only earn Alicia's disdain. Colin, Mrs. Sue smiled warmly when she saw me. You've been busy lately, haven't you? It's been a while since you visited. I sighed inwardly. Colin had only ever used her, but she genuinely cared about him. The old lady hadn't done anything wrong. Yes, I've been a bit busy. I brought you some chicken soup, please try it later. But Mrs. Sue grasped my hand, looking at me carefully for a moment before asking cautiously, has Ali upset you again? I shook my head, but she didn't believe me. She sighed. Ali's always been stubborn, and she keeps things bottled up inside. If she made you unhappy, just tell me, and I'll talk to her. I felt even guiltier. I had intended to tell her about the divorce, but now the words were stuck in my throat. I couldn't bring myself to say it. I stayed to have lunch with Mrs. Sue, chatting with her for a while afterward. As I was about to leave, I hesitated for a long time before finally speaking up. I'll be busy for a while, so I might not be able to visit often. I figured I'd gradually reduce the frequency of my visits, then find the right time to break the news. It would be easier that way. There was no way to keep the divorce a secret forever, even if I wanted to. Alicia definitely wouldn't agree to that. If I kept showing up, she'd probably think I was still trying to win her back. Mrs. Sue patted my hand and sighed softly. Colin, you're a good kid. What happened before, it wasn't Ali's fault. She never said anything to me, but I know she feels guilty, and she regrets it. She loved you so much. Losing the baby, it devastated her. My heart skipped a beat. The baby. Right. That was the incident that completely destroyed Colin and Alicia's relationship. Chapter 7. Yes. Colin and Alicia had a child before. Colin had used underhanded tactics to get her pregnant while she was drunk at a business dinner. In Colin's eyes, the baby was his most powerful weapon to keep Alicia by his side. When Alicia found out she was pregnant, she felt guilty toward her unforgettable first love, Justin, but she couldn't abandon her own child either. In the end, she chose the baby. She had already had a difficult childhood, 
and she couldn't bear for her child to be born into a broken home. That was the time when her relationship with Colin was at its best. She obediently took the prenatal vitamins Colin bought for her and poured over all sorts of parenting guides. She really wanted to be a good mother. So, when she had the miscarriage, it completely shattered their relationship. It's a strange story, really. After Alicia got pregnant, Colin noticed how much softer her attitude toward him had become. He pushed his luck, insisting that she stay with him all the time. Whenever Alicia tried to avoid him, he would use the excuse of doing activities for the baby's development or bonding as parents, forcing Alicia to compromise. But after this happened enough times, Alicia started to get frustrated. One time, Alicia was about to go on a business trip, and Justin was among the people going with her. Colin absolutely refused to let her go, insisting that she stay home and rest for the baby's sake. Alicia felt that he was being paranoid and controlling, and they had a huge argument. Colin, can you just act normal for once? Not everyone is as twisted as you. She slammed the door and stormed out. Later that night, Colin got the news, Alicia had miscarried after getting too upset. As you can imagine, this incident completely broke their relationship. They fought endlessly. If Alicia only despised Colin before, now she downright hated him. She never set foot in their home again and had no further contact with him. That is, until Colin went after Justin and pushed him down the stairs. That was the final straw. The original Colin really was insane. When he wanted to hurt people, he didn't even spare himself. I stayed silent for a while before saying, it's all in the past. The original Colin was gone now. Those things ended with him. When I left the nursing home, I was in a bit of a funk. I wasn't sure if it was because of Mrs. Sue or because of the original Colin. That mood hit its peak when I realized I had accidentally lost my car keys. In utter despair, I called Joanna. Come pick me up. Quickly. Joanna sounded incredulous. Am I your chauffeur? Do I have to drop everything and come running whenever you call? I'll pay you. I replied. Joanna. The nursing home was in a pretty remote area. So even getting a cab wasn't easy. Joanna eventually gave in and by the time I got home, it was dark. To make things worse, it was pouring rain. Looking at the torrential downpour outside, I graciously decided to let Joanna stay the night, giving her the guest room on the second floor. The next morning, the doorbell rang. Seriously, who's ringing the doorbell this early? Half asleep, I groggily stumbled over to answer the door. Who, why are you here? Standing outside was none other than Alicia. She was just about to say something when footsteps came from the stairs, and Joanna's voice. Clearly irritated from being woken up, called out, who is it? Alicia's face instantly turned cold, and she spoke through gritted teeth, as if every word was forced out, looks like I'm interrupting. Chapter 8, I rolled my eyes internally, oh, so now you realize you're interrupting, and why are you mad? This is my house, you're just the ex-wife, so why do you get to act like you've been wronged, pulling this cheated on act? You've been cheating on me for so long, and I haven't even bothered to call you out on it. I turned to Joanna and said, no big deal, go back to sleep. Joanna had her own princess syndrome, but she was only here because she got caught in the rain last night, so the least I could do was let her get a good night's sleep. Seeing Alicia seemed to wake Joanna up completely, and she lazily smiled, we've got a guest. Huh, wouldn't it be rude if I just went back to bed? Colin, why don't you invite her in? I, see, I told you this woman goes crazy when she doesn't get enough sleep. I ignored her and turned back to Alicia, clearly not planning to let her inside. I had just finished clearing out all her stuff, and I wasn't about to mess up the house again. It would only mean more work for the cleaner later. So early, MS. Sue, is there something you need? I asked. Alicia's face turned a shade darker, clearly irritated by Joanna's few casual words, but she couldn't lash out. If this were before, she could have kicked Joanna out as the mistress of the house. But now, now she wasn't even on Joanna's level, she couldn't even step foot inside. But Alicia, like all women of her kind, was good at keeping her cool. She took a deep breath, ignored Joanna, and pulled out a key from her pocket, handing it to me. You left this at my mom's yesterday. She asked me to bring it to you. The implication was clear, she was only here because her mom made her come. Oh, thanks. I took the key. You really didn't have to trouble yourself. I have a spare. Alicia had nothing to say to that. After a few moments of silence, my patience ran out, and I politely hinted, MS, Sue, is there anything else? If Alicia couldn't tell I was asking her to leave, then she'd wasted all her years climbing to her current position. She pressed her red lips together. No. Slam. I shut the door in her face. Joanna was standing on the stairs, watching me. I raised an eyebrow. Not going back to sleep. Why are you staring at me? Joanna narrowed her eyes, crossing her arms. Nothing. Really. I just think, you seem a bit heartless toward your ex-wife. I rolled my eyes. If you don't have anything to say, you don't have to say anything. Joanna tilted her head slightly. Colin, 
Don't tell me you haven't noticed her feelings. I shot back. What feelings? Joanna leaned against the railing, speaking lazily. She wants to see you, doesn't she? Otherwise, she wouldn't have rushed over so early just to return a car key. Nor would her face have turned so sour when she saw me here. I tilted my head. And so, Joanna tapped the railing with her fingers, her tone casual. Don't you feel anything? Feel what? Just because she turned around. I'm supposed to chase after her. I found it kind of funny. Oh, I do. Joanna's eyes flicked over to me, her back straightening a bit. I shrugged. I feel like I should have divorced her sooner. If I'd known what kind of person she was, I would have moved on a long time ago. She wasted so much of my time. Chapter 9. Joanna seemed surprised by what I said. She stared at me for a moment, then suddenly turned her head and laughed. Well done, Colin. You've finally grown a backbone. Feeling encouraged, I couldn't resist complimenting her back. Oh. Not at all. I'm still far behind you. Now, she was the real master, navigating through countless relationships without ever getting attached. Joanna smirked. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't have anything to do with those men. I quickly agreed. Of course. Of course. You're just playing the field until you find your true love. Isn't that how it always goes in the novels? The rich, spoiled heiress eventually meets her destined love, and all her old emotional debts get repaid tenfold. Joanna gave me a deadpan look before muttering. There's no talking sense with an idiot like you. And then she went back to sleep. I slept until the afternoon, waking up because I was starving. When I checked my phone, I saw a bunch of missed calls and messages, all from the original Colin's parents. After scrolling for a bit, I figured out why they were suddenly trying to contact me. They had found out about the divorce. You divorced Alicia. What on earth were you thinking? How many times have we told you? Alicia's company is doing great, and we were in the middle of negotiating a partnership with them. What are we supposed to do now? How old are you? How can you be this irresponsible? You divorced her just like that. Didn't you consider how this affects anyone else? You're so selfish. I don't have a son like you. The messages went on and on, but they were all the same. I skimmed through them, then got up to find something to eat. Damn, that smells amazing. I was dumbfounded to see the table piled with a feast. And there was Joanna, casually enjoying her meal. Joanna, do you have no conscience, eating all this by yourself? Joanna raised her eyes lazily. What? Should I starve for you? That logic was so solid, I couldn't argue with it. I sat down and grabbed some chopsticks, going straight for my favorite dish, shredded pork with garlic sauce. One thing about Joanna, she really knew her food. Even the takeout she ordered tasted better than what most people got. Oh, by the way, your parents called me too, Joanna said as she ate. They said they've been trying to reach you, but you weren't picking up. I picked up a braised rib. Yeah, I know. Joanna's chopsticks paused for a moment and her gaze flicked to my phone. Should I give you some space? I waved it off. No need. They'll say what they want, but it's already done. There's nothing they can do about it. Just as I spoke, the phone rang again. I answered it. Before I could even say hello, a sharp voice started yelling. Colin, you go find Alicia right now. Tell her you made a mistake, that you were just being impulsive. Beg her to take you back and remarry. Listening to the shrill voice, I had to hold the phone away from my ear for a moment. Remarry. Are they serious? I'm well aware that getting yelled at is way better than being killed by Alicia. Colin, are you even listening to me? I finally responded. I'm listening. But this isn't going to work. I can't do it. The voice on the other end got even angrier. Colin, is this how you speak to your parents? I replied calmly. Didn't you say before that I'm not your son? Did you forget? There was sudden silence on the other end. It seemed like she wanted to start yelling again. But I couldn't be bothered. Anyway, I've made my decision. And I'm busy right now. We can talk some other time. With that. I hung up and blocked the number. Joanna, who had witnessed the whole exchange, was left speechless. Chapter 10. She set down her chopsticks and looked me up and down for a good while, clearly amazed. Well, Colin, not only did you dump your ex-wife, but now you're standing up to your parents too. I was still chewing on some meat, so I mumbled back. Where there's oppression, there's resistance. Joanna let out a sarcastic laugh, leaning forward slightly and resting her chin on her hand, her red lips curling into a smirk. So. Does that mean I'm next? I gave her a thumbs up, praising her self-awareness. Her reaction didn't surprise me. She had grown up with the original Colin, so she knew exactly what kind of person he used to be. From her perspective, everything I had done probably boiled down to one conclusion. I've lost my mind. But honestly, anyone would go crazy with all this drama. I'm just a supporting villain. Without the protagonist's plot armor, the best move is to get out while I still can. Oh, by the way, help me find a new place. I said, this villa's nice but I don't like being disturbed all the time. It wasn't just Alicia, Colin's whole family was a nuisance too. Now that I had completely burned that bridge, 
who knew when they might show up to cause trouble, and I had zero interest in dealing with that, Joanna understood, got it, leave it to me, Joanna was a top-tier rich kid, sure, she spent most of her time eating, drinking, and partying, but when you really needed her, she got things done, the next day, she called me saying she'd found a villa on the west side of the city, the previous owner moved abroad and is desperate to sell, the place was just renovated and never lived in, you're getting a steal, I was very satisfied with her efficiency, that same day, I dragged Joanna along to sign the contract and transferred the ownership as fast as possible, then I immediately listed my current place for sale, I called a moving company, and soon enough, a group of movers was running up and down the stairs, packing up everything, I couldn't help but shake my head, I hadn't realized how much stuff the original Colin had until now, this was going to cost extra, wasn't it? Mr. Ku, what's in this box, it's pretty heavy, one of the movers asked, hauling a large cardboard box down from the third floor, the box was sealed tightly, so I couldn't see what was inside, just as I was about to go over and check, I got a phone call, hello, is this Mr. Ku? This is the third people's hospital. Your wife fainted on the street and was brought here. Can you come to the hospital as soon as possible? Chapter 11. I froze. Alicia fainted. And she's in the hospital. You must be mistaken. I'm not her husband. I explained. The voice on the other end sounded surprised. But the contact information on her phone. Oh. Right. I suddenly remembered. Back when Alicia was pregnant. Colin had insisted on changing his name in her phone to Dear Colin. Husband. Alicia had given in at the time. I guess she'd forgotten to change it back after the divorce. How is she doing? I asked. She likely fainted due to low blood sugar. There's no immediate danger. But her overall condition isn't great. It's better if you. I see. But I'm a bit tied up right now. Why don't you give her current boyfriend a call? His name is Justin. You should find his number in her contacts. If anything comes up, just contact him. I hung up and looked around. The living room was now filled with even more boxes. How long is this going to take? Just move everything out for now. I'll sort it later when I have time. Luckily, the new house was big enough. I asked the housekeeper to organize things. Then I spent the rest of the day playing a few rounds of games and checking out a new trendy barbecue restaurant. The food was great, and the place had an awesome vibe, so I couldn't help but take a bunch of photos and post them on social media. Check in. Another day of bulking up, I added, along with a few selfies. My friends showered me with likes, and even Joanna, who rarely commented on social media, chimed in. This place is pretty good, I replied. You've been here. Joanna, of course, I own it, wow, she really knows how to pull it off, what I didn't expect was that Justin also left a comment, his tone was polite but laced with condescension and accusation, Colin, even though you and Ali are divorced, she's in the hospital right now, don't you think you should at least visit her, I, what's wrong with this guy, as soon as Justin's comment dropped, my social feed exploded, only a few people knew about my divorce with Alicia, and I hadn't even figured out how to break the news yet, but now he'd gone and put himself on the moral high ground. Well, if that's how he wants to play it, I replied pretentiously, a good ex should act like they're dead, I just didn't want to cause any misunderstandings, but if you don't mind, I'll go visit. After all, we were classmates, and it's only right to check in on her. What do you think? My social feed erupted, people were buzzing with excitement. Not long after, Justin quietly deleted his comment. Oh, so deleting it makes everything go away, huh? I quickly followed up with another public post, calling all social media experts, what's the best gift to bring when visiting your ex-wife and her current boyfriend in the hospital, this is super important. Chapter 12, an hour later, I arrived at the hospital carrying a bag of fruit, just as I approached the room, I heard Justin's voice, full of concern, Ollie, don't be mad, I know I was wrong this time, but I was only thinking about you, there was no response from Alicia, Justin, sounding both frustrated and wronged, continued, you passed out, and the hospital even called him, but he didn't bother to come see you, what if something had happened to you today, he made it sound like I had committed some unforgivable crime, finally, Alicia's tired voice came through, I'm a little tired, Justin, I'd like to be alone for a while, after a brief pause, I heard the sound of a chair being moved, and then Justin appeared at the door, when he saw me, he froze, staring in shock, sensing something was wrong, Alicia turned to look as well, her face was pale, devoid of the usual commanding presence she had as a powerful CEO, lying in the hospital bed with an four drip in her arm, she looked unexpectedly fragile, when she saw me, her dull eyes brightened for a moment, filled with what seemed like a mix of tension and uncertainty, Colin, what are you doing here, I stepped past Justin and walked into the room, well, I didn't want people talking behind my back, saying that I didn't care if my ex-wife lived or died right after the divorce, after all, we were college classmates, no need to make things so awkward, right, Alicia's face went pale, 
her lips tightening into a thin line. She must have seen the little exchange between me and Justin on social media. Knowing how proud she was, she couldn't stand being publicly teased like that. It must have felt like a humiliation. Her hatred for me probably just grew another notch. The thought of it annoyed me. Alright, now that I've shown up, if there's nothing else, I'll be on my way. Alicia's mouth twitched slightly. Colin, do you really have to act like this? I raised an eyebrow, genuinely curious. Like what? You didn't visit me until three days after my car accident. Compared to that, I think I'm being pretty reasonable, don't you? If we're talking about being ruthless, who can top the female lead? Alicia's face turned ashen. Her mouth opened as if to say something, but my phone rang, interrupting her. It was the housekeeper from my villa. Mr. Ku, most of your belongings have been organized, but there's one box we haven't touched yet. It's full of ceramic items. What would you like us to do with them? I paused. Ceramic items? Yes, and it looks like you made them yourself, so I thought I'd check with you first. From the corner of my eye, I caught Alicia's startled expression, and a memory flashed through my mind. Oh, right. Those ceramics were indeed made by the original Colin. Back in college, Alicia worked part-time at a DIY pottery shop, and Colin would often go there to see her. Spending entire afternoons there, he had no talent for it, and no patience either, his only focus was on Alicia. As a result, every time, he'd leave covered in clay, taking home some hideously ugly, finished product, but he never got tired of it and didn't seem to care how ridiculous he looked. Eventually, Alicia couldn't take it anymore and told him he was doing it wrong. Colin immediately seized the opportunity to push further. Then why don't you teach me yourself? Of course, Alicia refused, but Colin was a VIP customer at the shop and she couldn't afford to offend him. It wasn't until Alicia quit that Colin finally stopped going. That box of art pieces had been accumulated during that time. They're not important. Just throw them out, I said indifferently. Chapter 13. Wait. Alicia suddenly spoke up. You moved. I had to admit, this woman could be sharp when she wanted to be. I nodded. Yep. Alicia frowned. Where to? Why so sudden? I couldn't help but laugh. MS. Sue, how many times do I have to remind you? We're divorced. What I do and where I live have nothing to do with you anymore. Alicia's expression faltered, like she had just heard something she couldn't accept. Her eyes reddened slightly. After a long moment, she finally relented, her voice low. If you don't want the ceramics, I can send someone to pick them up. I gave her a curious look. Those are my things. If I want to keep them, I will. If I want to throw them away, I'll throw them away. For some reason, that sentence seemed to strike a nerve. The last bit of light in Alicia's eyes flickered out. It was like watching a weak flame in the wind finally blow out. Justin, clearly worried, quickly stepped forward. Ollie, are you okay? Alicia turned her head slightly, avoiding his hand. Justin froze, visibly embarrassed, but I had no interest in their drama, so I turned to leave. Just as I stepped outside, a doctor called out to me. Huh? I looked up to see a woman in her forties, a doctor, studying me. Why are you here? Are you feeling unwell? I was confused for a moment. Then glanced at her name badge, it read, Obstetrics Department Chief. An unsettling thought crossed my mind. The only thing Colin had ever been involved with that could connect him to this doctor was the baby from before. Thanks for your concern, but I'm fine. I'm just here visiting a friend. I replied vaguely. The doctor seemed to relax. That's good, but you and your wife are at the right age now. Next time you have a child, you shouldn't give it up. I was stunned. Those two sentences carried a massive amount of information. A child, a child. Didn't Alicia have a miscarriage? What is the doctor talking about? Wait, that night when Colin arrived at the hospital, Alicia had already been wheeled out of surgery, with Justin sitting by her bedside. Ali, what are you doing? Justin's alarmed voice jolted me from my thoughts. I turned around to see Alicia yanking out her fore and pushing Justin aside as she rushed over to us. She blocked the doctor, her voice tight with tension. Doctor, this is a private matter between my husband and me. It's none of your concern. I felt a chill run down my spine as I slowly turned to look at Alicia. For the first time, this beautiful face seemed completely unfamiliar to me. Alicia, what does this mean? The doctor's brows furrowed. You didn't know. Your wife told us you both were focused on your careers and weren't ready for children. So she chose to have an abortion. You mean to say you had no idea? Chapter 14. I can't even remember how I got home. The shocking news had left me completely numb. I sat in the study for a long time, closing my eyes. How could this be? In the novel. It was clearly written that Colin's jealousy and argument with Alicia had caused her miscarriage. How could it be? For some reason, thinking about this made something deep inside me ache as if I could feel the same hopelessness and pain Colin must have felt when he learned the baby was gone. The discomfort grew stronger. I shook my head, trying to shake off the feeling. The study had been recently organized. I flipped through a few things, finally finding the box that stored my old university stuff. At the very bottom was a college memory album. 
If the miscarriage wasn't how it was written in the book, could there be other differences too? Opening the first page, I saw a picture from military training. The sun was blazing, and a boy in a green uniform was smiling brightly. Behind him, standing on the stage, was a slender figure. Even though the figure was far away, anyone could tell at a glance that it was Alicia from their college days. Beneath the photo were a few lines of small text. On the first day of training, a girl fainted next to me. I carried her to the infirmary. She was so light. I didn't expect to see her again on stage today. Giving the freshman speech. Turns out her name is Alicia. Pretending to take selfies just to sneak pictures of someone you like. A classic move. This must have been when he first started liking Alicia. I chuckled a little. Colin fell in love with Alicia in such a simple and cliched way. Love at first sight. I couldn't help but touch my face. The Colin in the book was selfish. Reckless. And obsessive. He seemed so different from the one with that bright carefree smile in the photo. It was hard to imagine that the boy with stars in his eyes would eventually become the paranoid, domineering, and selfish man he was later on. I kept flipping through the album, surprised to find that every single photo was related to Alicia. There were pictures of her attending class in a lecture hall, playing badminton with her hair flying, eating alone in the cafeteria, and working diligently at the pottery shop. Sometimes, next to the photos, there were short comments. The classes she chooses are so boring. Ugh. I don't understand them. How can a girl be so good at both studying and sports? She always eats alone, and it's always the cheapest meal at the cafeteria. Does she ever get full? She always seems so busy, not even enough time to talk to me. It was a whole album of Colin's unrequited love for Alicia. For four years, he had taken countless photos of her. Every picture and every sentence painted a very different Colin than the one in the book. She seems to like someone, but it's not me. What should I do? Maybe I should give up. Tomorrow is the graduation ceremony. Should I confess and say goodbye to this one-sided crush? She suddenly left in the middle of the graduation photo shoot. I followed her secretly and found out her mom's condition had worsened, and they needed a lot of money. What will she do? The page where the graduation photos should have been was blank. Because of Alicia, Colin missed his own graduation photo. My hands began to tremble slightly. I didn't know why, but I suddenly felt like this album was unbearably heavy, weighing down on me making it hard to keep turning the pages. It felt like if I kept reading, something uncontrollable would happen. There was a tightness in my chest, like a heavy stone pressing down, making it hard to breathe. But some unseen force pushed me to keep going. Then I found a wedding photo. Chapter 15. No, to be more precise, it was a passport-sized photo, the picture from their marriage certificate. Colin still had a smile on his face, but it was more subdued. A small curve at the corner of his lips. His body leaned slightly toward Alicia. Alicia however, looked calm and indifferent, completely out of place against the joyful red background. I realized they never had a proper wedding photo. After a year of back and forth, Alicia finally chose to marry Colin, but she didn't marry the person she loved most, so she had no interest in the trivial details of the wedding. At the time, her mother was also in the hospital, so they didn't have a wedding ceremony or take any wedding photos. They just got the certificate and called it a marriage. I had expected that on this page, the day he finally got to be with Alicia, Colin would have written a lot, but there wasn't a single word. I stared at that photo for a long time, feeling an inexplicable tightness in my chest. Five years of unrequited love, five years of marriage, and this was the only picture they had together. I pushed down my emotions and kept turning the pages, but there were no more photos of Alicia. Only occasional sentences remained. She's been so busy lately. Her company is just starting, and she has to handle everything herself. It must be exhausting. I made her favorite sweet and sour ribs but she came home smelling of alcohol and fell straight into bed. She bought an apartment near her company for convenience. But that man, why is he there too? I know I'll never mean as much to her as he does, but I still want a child of our own. Am I beyond hope? I went to the nursing home again today and ran into Joanna helping her dad check out. She told me I was being an idiot, that Alicia isn't the type of woman who'll fall for this kind of trick. I turned and left because I knew she was right. I was ready to give up. But that night she came home, drunk. I couldn't resist kissing her and for the first time, she kissed me back, there was a blank space, then, finally, on one page, I think, she's pregnant. I kept reading, those two months were indeed the best period of Colin and Alicia's relationship, even though he knew that Alicia's change in attitude was only because of the baby, but by then, he didn't want anything else, from the moment he fell for her all those years ago, he had been hopelessly in love with this person, he once believed she was the light of his life, he wanted to draw warmth and affection from her, but from the start, it was all wrong. This seemingly perfect dream finally shattered. The last page held a torn consent form for an abortion. Alicia's signature scrawled in the bottom right corner. It felt like lightning had struck me, and a wave of pain washed over me, leaving me numb and cold. Countless images flashed through my mind. 
crashing over me like a violent storm, as if trying to drown me, I felt like a fish gasping for air before a storm, trying to break the surface to breathe, only to be dragged under by a bigger wave, I couldn't breathe, couldn't move, and then, finally, it hit me, I hadn't transmigrated, I am Colin, chapter 16, the sudden ringing of my phone cut through the silence of the study, especially jarring in the quiet room, it was Joanna calling, I answered, and before I could say anything, Joanna's direct voice came through, did you go to the hospital to see Alicia today? Her flight was in the afternoon, so logically, she shouldn't know what's been going on here. Even though I had posted some things on social media, she shouldn't have such detailed information, especially about the timing. Yes, I didn't deny it. How did you know? She hesitated briefly. Alicia called me, asking some questions about you. Oh, I see. I nodded, not pressing for more. Sensing my indifferent tone, Joanna seemed to pick up on the fact that something was off. It's late. You're still awake? She asked, softening her voice and changing the topic. I was about to respond when the doorbell rang. To my surprise, it was Alicia. I hung up on Joanna, went downstairs, and opened the door, but I didn't invite Alicia inside. The sky had already gone completely dark, and the streetlights behind her cast a faint glow, leaving her face half-lit, half-shadowed. What do you want? I asked. Her lips were pale. I, I came to apologize. It had been three hours since I left the hospital, and only now did she think to say these words. No need. I replied flatly. It's all in the past. It was too late. I didn't need her apology anymore. Alicia's face turned even paler. Colin. Colin. Please listen to me. I can explain. That day. I was just impulsive. I. Was it really impulsive? Or was it premeditated? I asked softly. Carrying my child must have been painful for you. Right. Alicia froze. It took her a long moment before she closed her eyes and. With difficulty. Said. At first. I really didn't want this baby. But later. As the child grew day by day, I, I really, I was just confused in that moment, and I regret it. Isn't it too late to regret it now? Regret filled Alicia's eyes as her shoulders shook, but she couldn't find the words to respond. I gave her a faint smile. You wanted me to think that it was my fault, that you lost the baby because of me. Right, that way, I'd be consumed with guilt, unable to ever bring up the child again, and you'd finally be free. Isn't that how it goes? Alicia was stunned, deep down. She had always believed that I was exactly that kind of selfish, possessive, and jealous man. As long as the child was gone, I would have no reason to tie her down anymore. She opened her mouth, struggling to find the words, but that was between us. Why? Why did you suddenly go after Justin that day? I looked at her quietly. This was the woman I had loved for ten years. And yet, even at this moment, her heart was still focused on another man. I smiled. There was no particular reason. I just didn't like him. He deserved it. But the child is gone and we're divorced now. Alicia, you can finally be with him, you should be happy. No. Alicia seemed to snap, stepping forward and grabbing my wrist. I don't love him. I don't love him. Colin, can you please stop talking to me like this? We. Oui. I frowned, just about to push her away, when suddenly a soft laugh came from behind. Well, looks like I picked the wrong time to show up. Chapter 17. Alicia immediately froze. It was only then that I noticed the person who had arrived was Joanna, the one who was supposed to be out of town. She brushed a strand of hair from her ear, her beautiful eyes glinting coldly as she looked at Alicia. Alicia, didn't I tell you that since you were the one who wanted the divorce, you shouldn't come back and bother him? Alicia bit her lip, glaring at Joanna with equal hostility. My relationship with Colin is none of your business. Joanna raised an eyebrow and walked over, standing next to me and casually looping her arm through mine. My heart skipped a beat. Joanna. She tilted her head toward me, smiling in that sultry yet innocent way of hers. What? Are you planning on going back to her? My head felt a bit muddled, so I shook it. No such plans. But why are you back all of a sudden? She lifted her chin slightly. If I didn't come back, would I have to watch her harass you? Alicia stared intently at the way Joanna was holding my arm, her eyes turning red. Joanna, don't act like you're so noble. You know exactly what your intentions are, don't you? Joanna chuckled. She turned around, her smile still bright. Oh, since MS, Sue seems to know so much. Why don't you tell me exactly what my intentions are? Alicia refused to speak, her lips pressed tightly together. Joanna smirked. What's wrong? You won't say it. Fine. I'll say it for you. I've been waiting for you two to get divorced so I could chase after him. This chance doesn't come often, so of course I'm going to make the most of it. The night breeze carried her voice, every word ringing in my ears, stirring something deep inside my chest. Joanna continued. Alicia, if you had even a shred of decency. You wouldn't have asked those questions just now. Do you really think there's anyone out there who will keep forgiving you forever? Who will always give you another chance? 
Alicia's face turned deathly pale, her body swaying like she might collapse at any moment. She muttered, her voice shattered. I, I didn't mean to. Joanna seemed to have no patience for her, cutting her off coldly. I already told you, he's finally moving on from all of that and is ready to start a new life. Why would you come back and drag him down with it? I suddenly looked at Joanna. Something about what she said didn't sit right with me. Could she have figured something out? But Joanna didn't seem to notice my reaction. She simply said, you should leave. Don't come back. Alicia nearly collapsed, her gaze vacant, as if she had lost all sense of focus. I didn't want to watch any longer. So I said, all right, you came here to ask two questions, and I've already answered them. From today onward, we have no connection whatsoever. With that, I turned to leave. Suddenly, a dull thud sounded behind me. Alicia had fallen to her knees. Colin, her voice trembled uncontrollably. I know it's my fault. Everything was my fault. Please, just give me one more chance. Let's start over. Okay. Chapter 18. Joanna's first reaction was to glance at me. The usual arrogance and haughtiness in her demeanor seemed to fade away, leaving only her bright, beautiful eyes locked onto me. Her hand, hanging by her side, tightened, and her expression became tense. She was nervous. Alicia was waiting for my answer, and so was she. I turned and looked quietly at Alicia. Alicia, for five years of marriage, I wasn't like Justin, I wasn't the one you wanted, and all I did was cause you trouble. I even foolishly believed I could have you all to myself. That's what you think of me, isn't it? Alicia's face went pale. I added softly, you even believe that this marriage itself was forced. If it hadn't been for your mother, you would never have been with me, and there wouldn't have been all this drama. That's how you see our marriage, isn't it? That's what you told me before the accident, isn't it? Alicia's expression turned to one of deep regret, her eyes panicking. I, I only said that out of anger that day. I was too upset, I didn't mean. It was that conversation that made me fully understand how laughable, hateful, and pathetic I was in her eyes. After losing the baby, I was heartbroken, starting to wonder if I should set Alicia free. A man like me didn't deserve to be with her. So when Justin asked to meet, I agreed. I wanted to talk to him, to clear the air with the men who had always lingered around my marriage. But I didn't get the chance to ask my questions that day because Justin handed me the consent form for the abortion. Colin, did you really think having a baby would make Ali love you? I was there when you called her. I even told her she should listen to you and stay home instead of going on that business trip. But do you know what she said? She said you were just trying to trap her with the baby and that it was exhausting. You've loved Ali since freshman year, haven't you? Oh right. It was because she fainted during military training. And you carried her to the infirmary, wasn't it? Being helpful is a good thing. But falling in love because of that one little incident and expecting her to be with you forever, don't you think that's a bit much? Colin, stop fooling yourself. Ali is sick of you and the thought of having your child disgusts her. I never expected Justin to deliberately throw himself down the stairs, nor did I expect Alicia to show up at that exact moment. She didn't even bother to hear my side of the story. All she did was cry by Justin's side, deeply concerned for him. From start to finish, she didn't spare me a single glance. Later, when she finally made time for me, I wanted to confront her about the baby, but her words shut me down. Colin, how long are you going to keep this up? Do you realize how much you disgust me from head to toe? I had wandered the streets aimlessly for a long time that day, her harsh words echoing in my head, am I really that selfish? Am I that extreme? Am I really that detestable? Until that car hit me, and I blacked out, when I woke up, I became another version of myself, a version of me seen through Alicia's eyes, in this new world she created, I was mad, selfish, and obsessive, and most importantly, I no longer loved her, I stared into Alicia's eyes, speaking calmly, but Alicia, in this world, I don't love you anymore. It was my love that put you on a pedestal, but you were never worthy of it. Chapter 19 When I woke up the next morning, the sun was already up. I smelled something delicious and wandered into the kitchen, surprised to see Joanna cooking. I was stunned. Miss Chan, what's the occasion today that warrants such a grand gesture from you? Joanna tilted her head toward the garden outside. It's the day when someone annoying finally left. I, Alicia had knelt outside all night, but I didn't bother with her. I pulled Joanna who still wanted to argue, back inside, closed the door, and went to sleep, of course, in separate rooms, I sat at the table and took a bite of the toast and eggs she made, hmm, also happens to be the first time Miss Chan failed at cooking, Joanna rushed over, trying to take the toast from me, is it burnt, don't eat it, I'll make you a new one, I dodged her, no need, it's a waste to throw it out, it's still edible, Joanna eyed me skeptically, really, I held up the toast, want to try, just as she was about to take a bite, I leaned forward and kissed the corner of her lips, she froze, and her ears turned visibly red, Colin, I smiled, satisfied, and pinched her cheek, I heard you, I heard you, 
Why are you yelling so loudly? You're even louder than when you confessed yesterday, Joanna. She stayed quiet for a while before throwing herself into my arms, muttering softly. I thought you'd forgotten everything. After the accident, you couldn't remember much. I almost thought I'd be stuck taking care of a fool for the rest of my life. I ruffled her hair. How could I forget? Even if I forgot myself, I wouldn't forget you. Even in those days when I couldn't recognize or trust myself, I never let my guard up around her. I trusted her completely. She looked up at me, smiling with satisfaction. Finally using your brain for once. All these years, my feelings haven't gone to waste. Something tugged at my heart. I couldn't help but ask, Joanna, how could you be even more foolish than me? Why did you fall for someone like me? She puffed up with pride, because I have great taste. I knew I was waiting for someone worth waiting for. I laughed. Yes, yes, you're the best. Chapter 20, Alicia's Extra Story. Lately, I keep running into a boy. He's there during classes, at the badminton courts, and even when I'm working part-time. It seems like a coincidence, but his attempts are clumsy, and he's terrible at hiding his intentions. It's written all over his face. It's a bit annoying. It's not like I haven't had other boys interested in me before, but none of them were as blatant as he was. I thought he'd give up after a while, but to my surprise, he was incredibly persistent. I purposely started spending time with Justin, hoping he'd take the hint and back off. His disappointment was visible, and after that, I didn't see him for a long time. I felt relieved, though part of me thought, he really is the type to give up quickly. After all, he's a rich kid, he's never faced real hardship, he's nothing like us. I remembered Justin saying, and my mood soured. Even Justin's hints that we should be together irritated me, so I found an excuse to turn him down. I didn't have time for relationships. I had to take care of my parents and support my family. Justin, being understanding as always, didn't push the issue and instead focused on helping me. But then, things took a turn for the worse. My mom's condition deteriorated, and we needed a huge amount of money for her treatment. Just when I thought I had no way out, that boy appeared again. What do you want in return? I asked. He shook his head. I laughed bitterly inside, not sure whether I was mocking him or myself. All right, then let's be together. I heard myself say, I knew what he wanted, yet he acted like he didn't. But I had no choice, I needed the money, so I sold myself to him. His relationship with his family wasn't great, so he clung to me, but I was too busy. When did I have the time for him? Eventually, he started coming around less, and I thought he had finally let it go. I didn't realize he was busy causing trouble for Justin. I scolded him multiple times but he always denied it. Our arguments never ended well. When he finally stopped, I was relieved, until I saw him chatting with another woman at the nursing home. That woman was Joanna. I knew her, she was his childhood friend and came from a similar background. If it weren't for me, they would have been a perfect match. I'm a woman. I could see the way she looked at him. He would complain to her, bicker with her, all things he never did with me. How could he do this? He said he loved me, yet he was with another woman. He thought I was drunk that night, but I wasn't. I don't know where the possessiveness came from, but it consumed me, catching me off guard. When I found out I was pregnant, I felt an odd sense of relief. Now that I had a child, we would have to stay together, right? I don't even know how I ended up deciding to go through with the procedure. I thought it was a way to punish him, but I was wrong. It hurt me a thousand times more than I ever expected. Everything fell apart, spiraling out of control. I don't even remember how I said those things to him. I must have been losing my mind. When he signed the divorce papers, I realized it. I really had lost it. How could I let him go? I couldn't let him leave. But by the time I came to my senses, it was too late. I fired Justin and leaked the news about him taking kickbacks and leaking company secrets. He couldn't find work anywhere after that and begged outside my office for days before leaving the city in disgrace. I couldn't bring myself to change the contact name in my phone. But one day, when I called it drunk, I found out it had already been disconnected. Later, I heard he and Joanna had a grand wedding. That's when I finally understood something. I had lost him for good. The rain outside was pouring, dampening everything, seeping into my heart. It was my fault. It was all my fault. I lost him, and I lost myself. I'm sorry. Next time, please don't meet me again. Chapter 21, Extra. The next time I saw Alicia was three years later. Mom's not doing well. She wants to see you. I almost didn't recognize the woman in front of me. Alicia, once so glamorous and beautiful, now looked haggard and gaunt. In just three short years, she seemed to have aged 10 years. I heard she had gone through several old college classmates, trying to track me down before finally finding me. Although everything between us was long over, I couldn't help but think of the frail old woman lying in her hospital bed. So I nodded. All right, but I have something to do later, so I won't be able to stay long. Alicia's previously dull eyes lit up, clearly not expecting me to agree so easily. For a moment, she seemed a little unsure of what to do. And no problem. It's already amazing that you're willing to come. 
There was an unfamiliar nervousness and unease on her face as she spoke softly. I'm already so grateful you're willing to go. I made a call to my family. And then Alicia and I headed out to visit Sue's mother. Surprisingly, she wasn't in the nursing home anymore. The car finally stopped in front of a rundown apartment building. Oh, right. I'd heard that a few years ago, things fell apart between Alicia and Justin. Out of spite, Justin joined one of her rival companies and systematically pushed Alicia to the brink. Her company went bankrupt. She was deep in debt, and she had borrowed money from several classmates. In the end, after all that, she had ended up like this, unable to afford the nursing home fees, and without a proper place to stay. Now, she was renting a shabby apartment. When we got to the door, Alicia didn't go in right away. She placed her hand on the door, took a deep breath, and finally pushed it open. Sue's mother was lying in bed, skeletal and weak. Mom, Alicia called softly. Sue's mother heard her but slowly turned her head away, closing her eyes again. Alicia walked over and whispered, Mom, Colin came to see you. Sue's mother froze, trembling as she lifted her head to look at me. Mrs. Sue, I greeted her. Tears immediately welled up in Sue's mother's eyes, falling onto her thin, bony hands. Alicia rushed to wipe away her tears, but Sue's mother pushed her away. Get out, I have no daughter like you. Caught off guard, Alicia stumbled and fell to the ground, tears brimming in her eyes. I felt a little awkward, unsure of what had caused their relationship to become like this. Mrs. Sue, please don't get upset, but Sue's mother only cried harder. Her mouth opened and closed, her voice hoarse and choked with sobs. I I know everything now. Colin, it was Ali who wronged you. Our family, the Sue family, wronged you. I was silent for a moment before shaking my head. It's all in the past. Everyone has their own life now. We should all move forward, don't you think? Sue's mother trembled, turning her head away to cry. Colin, you're a good boy. You, you shouldn't come here again. Alicia, her eyes red and swollen, wanted to see me off downstairs. There's no need. Take care of your mother, I said, glancing at my phone. Alicia gave a bitter smile. Ever since she found out we divorced, she hasn't acknowledged me. She looks at me every day and just gets angrier. I wasn't in the mood to listen to this, nor was I interested. Grabbing my car keys, I prepared to leave. Alicia hesitated. Colin, are you in a hurry? Maybe we could have lunch or tea. I nodded. Yeah, I've got to go pick up Lara from school. Alicia froze as if struck by lightning. Her face went pale as a sheet. W what? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Lara, my daughter. I smiled. You haven't met her. She's got her mother's eyes but my nose and mouth. She's beautiful. Alicia couldn't say another word. She slumped onto the sofa slowly covering her face, and began to sob quietly. I turned and left. As the door closed behind me, I heard her collapse into full-blown weeping. I didn't look back. I walked straight to my car and rushed to the kindergarten. Daddy. A soft, sweet bundle of joy threw herself into my arms. I lifted her up and gave her a little toss. Let's go. Mommy's cooking something special at home today. My little girl scrunched up her nose, looking at me pitifully. Daddy, I want to eat your cooking. I tapped her nose playfully. All right. The part of me that was once missing had long since been filled with love. The past is just that, gone. Like smoke in the wind.